This is the eScoot Wayfarer. It's an electric bike that comes in at 899 pounds. I have a 50 pound discount code for all of you guys so you can get it cheaper than anyone else. This is super affordable and I'm very excited to try it out. This is perfect for your urban commuting, your leisure driving, it's perfect for cities, towns. You can take it a little bit off-road, maybe on some gravel like I'm standing on right now, but ultimately this is perfect for just driving in your local areas and for your daily commutes. Let's go ahead and cover a few categories I wanted to talk about specifically on this bike. I'll have them all chaptered down below in case you guys wanted to check out each one separately, but let's go ahead and see what this can do. So the first thing I wanted to cover is the specifications on this bike. Noticeably, you can see the wheels are very large. These are 28 inch wheels, which are very heavy duty and they come with puncture free tires, which is perfect for driving in multiple different terrains. The bike itself has a maximum speed of 15.5 miles per hour. And to complement that, you have a 250 watt gear hub motor, which is powered by a 360 watt hour battery, which is actually removable and I'll showcase that in a second. In terms of the travel distance, this can go approximately 40 miles on the electric assist pedal mode, but it can go up to 22 miles on full electric mode. To turn this on into full electric mode, you have to make sure the mode is set to zero, but it does have five modes to give you pedal assistance from one to five. This also has a seven speed gear system in, built into the bike as well, which was developed in Japan and it tailors for all different types of terrains. Now the weight of this bike is 25 kilograms, so it's not the lightest of bikes, it is pretty heavy, but the battery itself is also probably one of the heaviest components of the bike. It is detachable. As you can see, you can put the key inside the bike and it can easily be removed so you can charge it separately without having the need to have your bike near to a charging outlet to power up the full capacity of the battery. One caveat that I would say, although the battery is locked with a key, if you are going to leave your bike, let's say at a train station and you're going to jump onto the train, I would ideally still take the battery with you just in case there are thieves that might want to take it and maybe break into it and somehow remove the battery. So there isn't any alarm on this specifically. So I would recommend taking the battery out if you are going to leave your bike alone in a very long period of time. And although the bike is very heavy duty, the maximum payload on this is 120 kilograms. So whether that's you or someone else on the bike with you, it shouldn't exceed that amount. Now let's talk a little bit about the LCD screen here. You have the plus and minus buttons to change the levels, then you have the power on button. Just press that for a few seconds, it turns on the bike. On the top, you have the battery level, then you have the speedometer, then you have the odometer, which is the total distance traveled. Then you have the mode here. This is the pedal assistance level or the PAS. At the moment, it's set to level one. For the maximum assistance, you can go to level five. However, like I mentioned earlier, if you go down to level zero, this is the full electric mode. And in full electric mode, you get this attachment that comes in the box as well. This is the throttle. This one you have to put on separately. So I had to remove the rubber grip, slot this in and connect the wire to the connection port for the full electric throttle. And then to use this, you literally have to just twist it down like this, kind of like how you have on motorbikes. When you do this, it will spin the back wheel and go into full electric right from stationary. And here's an example. I'll just lean it on the kickstand. I've got it on mode zero for full electric. And as soon as I twist the throttle, you'll see it will start to ride itself. So that's a very convenient thing, but just remember if you do use full electric, then you still have a very large 22 mile range on a full capacity battery, which I think is absolutely great. Now let's talk a little bit about the design of the bike. It is IP5 waterproof, so you can be confident that if you are going to be driving in a bit of rain, it should be absolutely fine. Everything is covered. So it's tailored for multiple different weather conditions and pretty much all seasons. There's an LED headlight right on the front. It's pretty bright. You can just press the red switch and it will turn the light on. There's also a constant brake light at the back as well. So when you are driving in low lighting conditions or at nighttime, the light at the back will stay lit. And the saddle on the top of the bike is actually pretty comfortable. I've been riding this for about an hour straight and I didn't feel like, you know, I was feeling achy or anything like that. So it is very padded and it's very soft. So you can be confident that if you are going to go on a very long journey, then you should still be absolutely fine. On the handlebar, you have the rubberized handles for strong grip. Even in the toughest of weathers, it works. One other thing I also like to mention is that the horn on this bike is actually pretty loud. It's kind of like a bit of a car. You have a green button there for the horn just at the bottom on the left-hand side. That is very loud. So, you know, if you are driving behind someone in a quiet area, if you do press the horn, then I'm pretty sure that they might get a little bit scared. But 
it's also a very good security thing so if you are on a very busy and loud road then you can be sure that even people in cars might be able to hear you so it kind of tailors for both situations i wouldn't really use it if you're driving on pavements with a lot of pedestrians for road driving i think that is absolutely fine on the back of this bike it has a rear rack so you can pretty much put anything you want on there especially if you want to go shopping and put your groceries on there if you have a backpack you can tighten that on there this has a very strong tight grip on there that can clamp anything down against it of course if you want to buy some additional straps to make sure everything is tight then i recommend you buy that separately this can also be used if you're maybe going to a local park with your kids if you just want to place your child on there then i think that should be absolutely fine because all they need to do is basically they'll just have to sit there sideways while the main driver is riding the bike from the front and they'll have their legs out forward like this so you can pretty much use it for all different purposes one of the things i really like about this bike is this dropped bar design it gives you a lot of leg room to be able to get onto it now this bike is quite high up you can easily just tilt the bike sideways and put your foot through the gap there to get onto the bike i've seen a lot of bikes where the bars come out straight towards the level of the saddle and it makes it a lot more difficult for people that are maybe shorter to actually get onto the bike and mount themselves the saddle itself is adjustable you've got a little clip here that you can unscrew bring the saddle up to adjust whatever height you are handlebar is also adjustable this can tilt forwards and backwards to give you the right distance from however tall you are from sitting on there to reaching the handlebars i would say the minimum height to be maximum comfortability on the bike would probably be around five foot four but anything a lot shorter than that this might not be the bike for you because it is quite high up but all around it is a very heavy duty premium bike which is absolutely priced affordably for most people okay now let's talk about the performance now i've been using this bike for about a week now i've used it to go to the gym i went to my local shops to grab some groceries and just all around going for a bike ride in a national park like this they've got nice bike trails and i've tried this on different terrains as you can see i'm standing on a bit of a gravel terrain it's quite bumpy it's not a completely flat surface but because of the heavy duty tires it has maintained a ride very smooth and i've not really had any complaints with it after riding this for about an hour constantly the other day i felt like you know the saddle was pretty much comfortable that i didn't feel like my legs were aching or anything like that and to be honest it gave me a good workout as well because i tried to ride with less assistance as possible when i did switch over to the full electric mode it just made things even that more comfortable you know i can just sit back relax don't need to pedal just use the throttle and i thought that was great Ultimately, I think it's great for city biking. If you wanted to commute to work or maybe you're just going to meet some friends and going to their houses, then I think you know this does a great job for that. If you are a person that you know wants to be a bit more environmentally friendly rather than taking the public transport or taking your cars, this is a, a very good affordable price for you to maybe cover all of the different types of situations you're going to need a bike for. But I wouldn't recommend this for any off-roading. You know, there is a lot of vibrations that you will feel because this doesn't have off-road tires. So that's one thing to remember. And one thing that I did see that it does well, it manages to go uphill fairly easily with level five assistance. But if you did use that on full electric mode, it might struggle a little bit. That's why I always recommend if you do have very steep inclines, then use the pedal assistance because you're gonna need a lot of power from your legs to help you gain that momentum to get to the top. I would say the speed and the acceleration is very good on this bike you know i've not gone into any situation where it's struggled especially when i'm taking turns and very sharp turns that is it's maintained it very well and i don't feel like i was going to fall off or i needed to stop and readjust the bike or anything like that and you know when i'm going over bumps because some of the pavements they are very bumpy they're not completely flat some of the roads maybe they have you know a bit of potholes some cracks you do feel a little bit of vibrations when you're driving this but that's with every bike but this has you know given me the comfortability and the security knowing that it can pretty much handle those types of terrains very well especially for the price point of this bike and i've taken it to the maximum lock speed of 15.5 miles per hour as well on the main roads and i felt like i was very stable i wasn't shaking i didn't feel like you know i was going to steer off a little bit too much into the road so for me you know that's one of the key things especially if you are a biker and you always commute by bike then one thing you need to be sure of is that everything would be secure when you're riding you know in very dangerous situations although i'm very happy with this bike and the way it performs and especially the price point you know i think it's definitely something i would recommend there's a couple of critiques i just wanted to highlight as well just to be impartial first of all 
the front brake I think is a little bit weak. The back brake does a good job so you'll be able to stop in time if you do face an obstacle. If you use both brakes at the same time, you'd have a very good stopping point and you can brake, you know, like an emergency brake kind of thing. But one thing to highlight is that the bike doesn't have hydraulic brakes, which is where some of the cost saving comes back to the consumers. But because of that, you know, you just have to remember that it might not be as strong as you may expect from a front brake, which has hydraulic brakes. And the second thing, which is a very minor thing, is that the back brake light, I think the red light there is pretty weak. So if you are driving in pitch darkness, you know, you'd be able to see it when you get a little bit closer, but it doesn't really brighten up the road any more than you'd expect for, you know, a very secure backlight to have. This is just a minor thing because, you know, you can pretty much buy a lot of lights for your bike from Amazon and attach them. You can buy them for your wheels. There's loads of additional accessories that you can kit out your bike with, but the one that comes by default, I think is just a little bit weak. The one in the front is, does an absolutely good job. You know, it's very bright and I'm pretty much happy with that. So that's it guys. Hopefully you found that review useful. Hopefully it gave you an idea of the capabilities of this bike. 899 pounds. The link, the discount code for 50 pounds off, all in the description below. Any questions you have, anything else you want to know, ask me and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this review, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you like all things tech, I have new videos out every week. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.